Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a, another interview for the Journal of Immunotherapy and Precision Oncology, and we are excited to have Dr. Jeff Lohman with us from Thermo Fisher Scientific to talk about his publication in uh, the Journal of Immunotherapy and Precision Oncology about um, TCR sequencing. Uh, thank you for joining us, Dr. Lohman. Yes, thank you. It's great to have you with us today. So just to briefly um, introduce the, the topic, can you tell us a little bit about you know, TCR sequencing and, and, and what you're you know, um, using it for in, in regards sure. to this? Yes, yeah, so at, at Thermo Fisher, I work in the, uh, in the clinical next generation sequencing division. And in that division, um, you know, we develop platforms and assays using the, the ion torrent sequencing technology. And my group has developed a, a suite of TCR and BCR uh, sequencing assays um, targeting multiple applications. So we look at, um, you know, TCR and BCR repertoires in blood, in tissues, in humans and mice. Um, so we have assays covering uh, a variety of applications. So, you know, what, what we're going to talk about today and what, what this work was focused on is, is kind of biomarker research for immunotherapy. Uh, we also have kits to do, you know, heme oncology research. So looking at clonality, somatic hypermutation in leukemias and lymphomas. Um, there are, you know, several applications and, and really we've tried to create some differentiated assays. And, and really the one today is, is an example of that, uh, where we've built an RNA based assay that allows us to kind of um, preserve the allelic information in the TCR receptor. So we're priming in the constant region of the beta receptor um, and then sequencing nearly the entire receptor, priming in the framework one region. Um, so that, that really is a dif differentiated assay that allows you to, to read nearly the entire receptor. And that allows you to identify TCR alleles that are either novel or, and or contain polymorphism. Um, which really is is kind of what led us down the path to to designing that assay, and then led to to this collaborative work with the the folks at MD Anderson and and uh, Ong Yang's group at MD Anderson. Yeah, exciting, exciting stuff. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the the methods in in your paper that you published with us? Sure, sure. Yes. Yeah. So so I mentioned how this this long read TCR assay you know reads the full um, nearly the full TCR beta chain sequence, um, you know, we were driven to develop that assay because we had seen publications that indicate that polymorphism in the variable gene of TCRs uh, has an impact, potential impact on uh, autoimmune disease, right? So if we're able to correlate, you know, levels of polymorphism with different, um, you know, indications, diff different immune-related diseases, that, that opens a lot of doors. And, and it's really akin to what happens every day with HLA genotyping, right? You, you have an interaction between, um, you know, T cells and the MHC that's driven, you know, driven through HLA, and we type HLA all the time. But there's very little work done doing the same thing on the other side of that reaction where the HLA binds to the TCR, the, the TCR. Um, and so, you know, we really felt that polymorphism can lead to, you know, differing interactions between T the TCR and MHC and, and that that is most likely a cause or could be a cause to, um, you know, driving immu immune related disease. And in the particular context of this paper, we were interested in looking at um, grouping TCR beta variable gene alleles and looking for, um, you know, can we group these together in a way similar what is done with, with genotyping HLA? And can we then, if we, if we look at a cohort of, um, of uh, individuals that, that had undergone immune-related adverse events, um, do we see them break down in a, in a certain pattern? Do their haplotypes break down in a certain pattern? And really the, the paper that we published in, uh, in the Journal of uh, uh, Immunotherapy and Precision Oncology really was the method that we used to, you know, to form these uh, allele, for, for lack of a better word, haplotype groups. Um, 
So the, the method that we used was we're using this, this long read TCR panel. We're getting uh, really accurate identification of the variable gene groups that are in each individual in the study, um, each sample in the study. Um, and what we did was simply put those variable gene uh, allele groups. So every, everybody contains a certain amount of TCR variable genes in their, you know, immune repertoire. Um, and that is simple to measure. It's a germline. It's not going to change. So all you need is a blood sample. So we can do this on, you know, 25 nanograms of RNA uh, from blood. Very simple, uh, very simple sample to procure, easy assay to run. Um, what we come out with is the group of variable genes each sample contains. And then we can do principal component analysis followed by k-means clustering. And, and all that says is we're gonna, we're gonna determine you know, what splits these different variable gene profiles into groups. And then, you know, then we can accurately group them and, and then look for differences in how those groups look once they're separated. And, um, you know, so really the method is pretty straightforward. It count, it's, it's, the readout is really a, a base readout of our assay, you know, where, where you're determining what variable genes are in each sample. And then it's, it's a pretty simple analysis of, of PCA and K-means clustering to, to form the haplotype groups. I see, very interesting. So this is, I mean, exciting stuff. And I guess the, the next question would be, what are, you know, what are, how are things look, going to look like moving forward in your opinion? Sure, sure. So, so, you know, we're, we're looking forward to, you know, we've been working with MD Anderson to further this research, certainly. And, and what we saw in this paper, really our conclusions were that, you know, we could, we could break down these, I think we had 81 samples in this study, and we broke them down into six haplotype groups. And it was very distinct, some of the differences between those groups. There was definitely the largest group that broke out, contained kind of the, the lowest number of alleles in general. So they're carrying fewer alleles than the other groups. And they have less uncommon alleles. So you'll see in, in the five other groups, you see alleles that are much less common. So it seems like there's a breakdown between, you know, whether it's evolutionary, you know, people, and really it, it, it follows our hypothesis that if you're carrying, you know, variable, variable gene alleles with polymorphism, or if they're more novel, you know, you may be more prone to these kinds of immune diseases, or in the case of our study, maybe those people are more prone to immune-related adverse events after immunotherapy. So we would love, you know, really our, our next step is to publish work where we put the immune-related adverse event data on top of our haplotype groups. You know, we are really excited to see how those groups correlate to, you know, grade one and two versus grade three and four adverse events. You know, there's all sorts of overlaying comparison that we can do to follow up. So that's really the next step. You know, that, that sort of work that's already done that we're waiting to publish, I think to build on this, you know, we've, we've looked at 81 samples, right? So that's clearly not enough. To, to make sure. these kind of conclusions. Sure. And they're all Caucasian. So I think we need to really build out not only sample numbers, but also ethnicities. You know, we expect that, you know, for, for millennia, you know, there have been separation between these ethnic groups. And we fully expect that these haplotype groups are gonna look different as we cross ethnicities. And I think that that is a problem across a, a lot of oncology research, right? Um, getting good enough representation of other ethnicities in this data set is going to be really important. So. I mean, it sounds very exciting and we're looking forward, yeah. looking forward to seeing those results. For uh, sure. Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Lohman, for, for talking to us about this paper that you published with us. And thank you for doing this research and, and for, for publishing it with us. I think for anyone who wants to read the paper, they can uh, on our journal, the Journal of Immunotherapy and Precision Oncology. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Lohman. Yes, thank you very much for the opportunity. Appreciate it.